Hi, I'm Patrick Sweeney, the founder of Odin Technologies. I'm here to tell you about a project IATAS undertook to change the way baggage is handled by airlines and airports worldwide. IATA has embarked on a radio frequency identification or RFID initiative. They've embarked on this for three specific reasons. Number one, to reduce cost to airlines and airports. Number two, to increase the passenger experience, eliminating lost baggage, expediting bags to come through and, and lowering the wait times. And number three, to help the environment. In fact, one of the things that I didn't know until we embarked on this project with IATA is that if you took every baggage tag that was printed out on a yearly basis and you laid those tags end to end, they'd go around the equator three times. That's an awful lot of paper that goes to waste every year. IATA is trying to catalyze the industry, replace those paper tags with RFID tags. And in fact, eventually, people will use permanent RFID tags. The way IATA is going, through this process is to use a global standard, an ISO 18006 standard tag, one tag that works in every country and every frequency worldwide. The big question, however, became, what was the best tag? That's why they hired Odin Technologies. Odin's the leader in radio frequency identification. In fact, with 250 paid projects across five continents, no one comes close to the global experience that Odin has. Hello everyone, welcome to the Odin Labs. I'm Chetan Karani, technical lead on the IATA Baggage Tag Benchmark. There are some very few important factors that I'd like to point out that enable us to do this baggage tag benchmark right here in the lab. First, and the most important, is a special license that FCC has granted us. This license enables us to do European, FCC, and Japanese frequency testing right here in the lab. The second most important point, some of the dozen or more benchmarks that we publish publicly, and also several private benchmarks that we've conducted for tag manufacturers and reader manufacturers. Now let me introduce some of the baggage tags and inlays we investigated in this benchmark. UPM Rafletech short dipole, IER FF95, Alien Squiggle, or 9640. Avery Denison, 8833. Smart Track, L155. The IDA baggage tags went through three phases of testing. Phase one, frequency testing. Phase two, scientific testing. Phase three, use case testing. We're going to demonstrate two of the tests that we conducted for the scientific testing, that's tag sensitivity and orientation sensitivity tests. Baggage tag performance depends on several important criteria. First, being the silicon used. Second, the antenna design. Third, the label conversion process. Now, why is silicon an important factor? There are several important things that need to be considered when selecting a particular silicon. First, being its receive sensitivity. How, sensitivity, how sensitive it is to the noise floor around it and also to the power requirements. The second is, when it comes to global frequency, whether that silicon can be designed for narrow band or for a broadband application. And the third important being the user memory requirements. Now some of the silicon have higher user memory up to 512 bits, whereas some just are limited to a 96 bit EPC. The second important factor is the antenna design itself. As, as we all know that baggages can be tagged in the US and can go anywhere to Asia or Europe, now that basically requires a very broadband antenna design. And secondly is the material on which the tag is being applied. So you want an antenna that can be globally used as well as it has minimum impact on the material it's being applied to. And the third most important thing is the label conversion process. Now, different label converters use different machineries which have different torques, which may impact on how tightly a roll is either wound or how loosely the roll is wound. This can create wrinkles on the tag itself, can create printing issues. Secondly, what kind of a material or paper quality are they using? What kind of an adhesive they are using? All these important factors 
impact the performance of a tag. Now, let me explain some of the testing that we did here in our labs. And again, the testing was broken up into three segments. The first being frequency dependence. Second is the scientific testing. Third is use case testing. Now, let me explain you a little bit more about the scientific testing that we did here in the lab. They were also broken up into four types. The first being tag sensitivity, or MEP, which is minimum effective power. Now, let me explain this a little bit more. In different environments or in different geographies, reader are transmitting at different power levels. For example, in the US, you're transmitting at four watts EARP, whereas in Europe, in Japan, you're transmitting at a much lower power. Now, what that means is that the power that the tag receives varies as the geography changes. And what we're trying to find out here is what is the minimum power required for the reader to effectively wake up the tag and talk to the tag. So that is tag sensitivity. The second is power effectiveness. Now this tells us the tag performance when the power is varied from one milliwatt to thousand milliwatts. The third is orientation sensitivity testing. Now different airports have different business processes, have different ways of handling a bag, and also there are a lot of contract workers that change on a daily basis. So you want to minimize user training. Hence, you want to select a tag that is orientation insensitive. That is, that in any orientation, a bag or a tag should be read successfully. And the fourth scientific test is distance testing. This basically was just to test how a bag can be read in a tunnel kind of an environment or in a portal kind of an environment. And we also tested the extreme threshold and we tested bags at one feet, three feet, five feet, seven feet, and 17 feet distance from the reader's antenna. Now let's check the orientation sensory test setup. We have an OS table that can change from zero to 360 degrees in any orientation and angle that we need. What we have here is a test artifact with the material at the background and also a baggage tag. As we can see, the orientation table changes orientation as we conduct testing. And we can conduct testing and also log results for a reader power varying from one milliwatt to thousand milliwatts. So that basically helps us identify how a tag will perform under different power conditions and in different orientations. The third phase of this project, which is the use case testing phase of the project, was conducted in a real-world baggage handling system right outside Washington, D.C., with conveyor speeds of 240 feet per minute. Let me stress this again. 240 feet per minute with interferer readers on. Four types of bag materials were tested. A soft bag, as you can see here. A pelican case, which is a hard plastic case. A metal case. And also a duffel bag. Four different tag orientations were tested at these speeds. The first is the tag in the forward direction, tag in the right location, tag in the aft or the back position, and also tag on the left position. And as you can see here is, is a baggage tag which has real world barcode information as well as tag information. And the three top performing tags of this type were tested. Also now you can see is, is a pelican case, which is a hard case. Again, material dependency plays a very important role because different materials have different dielectric properties or in case of metals which reflect RF energy can also shadow an RF tag, which can make it difficult for the RF tag to read. Hence, I think use case testing is one of the most important phase of this projects that help us understand which of the top three performers perform well. And now let me hand it over to Harold Goldson, who led and managed this project, and he'll also give you some of the conclusions. Hi, I'm Harold Goldson. So sorry I can't be with you this week in Beijing, but I'm off to Europe to a client site. Interesting thing about our study, though, the tags operate best in the European frequencies, and actually one of the best performing tags comes from a manufacturer in Europe. And thirdly, nobody in the airline industry is using those tags. Now, we are compiling the results from our tests into a benchmark study, which is due out today at IATA membership sometime in mid-June. In the meantime, if you have any questions about this study, you can contact Andrew Price or Naomi Pandur at IATA. And as always, if you have any questions about RFID, feel free to contact us here at Odin Technologies. Thank you and have a good day. On the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. Well, I find
my love is making music with